Today, I'm going to show you my method for solving a subset of Rubik's Cube in which you can only move the RW and UW slices. Before you start this tutorial, you should already know how to solve the 2x2 and 3x3. Also, you should be comfortable with the move notation. Unfortunately, this method will take 300 to 400 moves. Also, with the algorithms, I'm going to use R and U to describe RW and UW, just so it's shorter to read. But remember that you're still using RW and UW moves. So, I'm going to start with a scramble. Okay, so step one is to just solve the corners. If you ignore everything except for the corners, you can just solve it like a 2 gen 2x2. Two two. Now, I'm really bad at this, but what I do first is I solve the bottom layer. So since these pieces here are always stationary, there's only two pieces I have to fill in. So this one's already in place just automatically. But then here's the last one. So I would put it in like, I can bring it up like that. And now I have these two pieces here and then I can bring them down to the bottom. This completes the bottom layer because we're only paying attention to the corners right now. For the top layer, it's like OLL for 2x2. Two two. I just do trial and error with soons and anti-soons, but I'm sure there are faster ways to do that. So in this case, we just have an anti-soon, because we're only looking at the corners, remember, so. There, that solves the top layer. Just a simple AUF, and we've finished all the corners. Hooray! You might end up with something other than a soon or anti-soon, like here, here's a double soon. So you can just, or double headlights, I don't know. You can do that like this, and the algo I use for that is just a double soon algorithm. So yeah, there we go. That solves the corners. Okay, so here's another example of something that I don't know how to do. So I guess the peanut or something. Um, I'll just try things. Oh, okay, that worked again. Usually it takes me like three or four tries. I should really learn how to do it faster. Here's all the algorithms. If you're feeling lazy, the only ones you really need to know are soon and anti soon. Step two is solving the centers. Now you might think, you can't solve the centers, they don't move. But in this case, we're treating these three pieces down here as stationary, and the centers do move relative to those pieces. So the first case you might get is that the centers are already solved relative to the corners. In that case you're done, so skip to step three. But that's pretty rare. The second case you might get is where two centers are solved and the other four are all opposite corners. In that case, grab the two solved centers. If they are in the x dimension, as in left and right, then you do this algorithm. u, r2, u2, r2, u2, r2, u. And now all the centers are solved relative to the corners. You can remember that it starts with u because that's the only face you can turn when grabbing these two centers. If the solved centers are in the y dimension, as in up and down, then do this algorithm, r, u2, r2, u2, r2, u2, r. Same logic, you start with r because that's the only face you can turn when grabbing these two centers. Finally, if the solved centers are in the z direction, as in front and back, then, well you can see that when you grab it you can turn either the up face or the right face. And you can, there are two algorithms to fix this. One of them is r2, u2, r2, u2, r2, u2, and the other one is U2, R2, U2, R2, U2, R2. You might have noticed that these are all the same algorithm, just shifted around a bit. The third case you might get is where all six centers are unsolved. When this happens, the centers will always form two, three cycles. What I mean by this is if you follow where every center needs to go, so this orange one needs to go here, this blue one needs to go here, and this white one needs to go here, so you have a three cycle going here, 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 yeah. So that's a three cycle. And then there's an, on the opposite side, there's another three cycle here. Three cycles always rotate around a corner, so these are rotating around this corner here, which I'll call a pivot. One of these four corners on the front side will always be a pivot. So, there's four algorithms to fix each case. To rotate centers clockwise around the down front right corner, you do R U R U R U prime R prime U prime R prime U prime. To rotate centers clockwise around the up front left corner, you do the opposite of that. R prime, U prime, R prime, U prime, R prime. U, R, U, R, U. To rotate corners clockwise around the up front right corner, you do the same algorithm as this corner, but start on the second move. So it's U, R, U, R, 
U prime R prime U prime R prime U prime R. Finally, to rotate centers clockwise around the down front left corner, you do the same algorithm as this corner again, but start on the tenth move. So it's U prime R U R U R U prime R prime U prime R prime. So that covers all of the cases where you need to rotate clockwise. If you need to rotate counterclockwise, you have two choices. You can either do the algorithm twice, because it's a three cycle, so clockwise twice is counterclockwise once, or you can do the alg backwards, which is harder but more efficient. Now it's time for step three, the edges. This is the most time consuming step. It's kind of similar to classic Pachmann blindfold solving. So there are six algorithms I use. First, I'm going to perform them on a solved cube just to show what they do, and then I'll do a walkthrough solve of just the edges. So the first edge algorithm of six is called up left. I'll get to why in a bit. Here it is. U prime R prime U prime R prime U R U prime R U R U prime R two U prime R U R U prime R U R prime U prime R prime U prime. It might help memorizing if you realize it's a palindrome. Okay, so what did that do? It sent the front left piece to the up left position, and the up left piece to the back left position, and the back left piece to the front left position. It did a three cycle. More specifically, it did a U perm. But all you have to pay attention to is the fact that it sent this front left sticker, the green one, to the up left position. That's why I call it the up left algorithm. In all six of these algorithms, the front left sticker is the one that's going to be sent off into different positions. Think of it as like an airport where pieces slash planes are departing. Okay, so the next algorithm is LU, and it's the shortest edge algorithm. U, R prime U, R, U prime R, U, R prime U, U, R prime U, R, U prime R, U, R prime U. If you group the moves into sets of three, it's really easy to remember. Now you can see what this alg did. It sent this front left sticker to the left up position. Not the up left position, that was the other algorithm. This is the left up position here, this green one. The third algorithm is up front. R, U, R, U, R2, U prime, R prime, U. R U R prime U prime R U R two U prime R prime U R U R prime U two R prime. It sent the front left sticker to the up front position. It's up front with you. Whatever. The fourth algorithm F U. Yeah, F U. No, actually, this algorithm isn't too bad. U two R prime U R U R prime U prime R two U R U prime R prime U. R U R prime U prime R two U R U. So what that did was it sent the front left sticker to the front up position or the F U position. Just two more to go. The fifth algorithm is front right. U prime R U two R U prime R prime U R two U R prime U prime R U prime R prime U R two U R prime U R prime U. So what that did was it sent the front left sticker to the front right position. Last algorithm, right front. R prime U, R prime U, R U prime, R prime U prime, R U, R two U prime, R prime, U R U prime, R prime U prime, R U R two U two R. So as expected, what that did was it sent the front left sticker to the right front position right here. Now I'll finish up the walkthrough solve. So we've done everything except for the edges, and that's what I'm gonna do now. What I do is I look at the front left sticker here, in this case it's the orange sticker on the orange white edge, and I see where it needs to go. And then I use one of those six algorithms to send it there. So here I can see this guy, orange white, needs to go here with the orange white, so it's gotta go here. And that is the left up algorithm, which is the shortest one, so yay. Okay, let's do it. It's U, R prime U, R, U prime R, U, R prime U, U, R prime U, R, U prime R, U, R prime U. So now you can see that it has placed the piece in the right position. And now the piece that was here got sent here, and this is the one I'm going to be looking at now. It's the white and blue piece. The white and blue piece needs to go up here. The blue sticker needs to go here to be specific. But we don't have an algorithm to send a piece back here. So what I can do is rotate the R slice freely until it reaches one of the target positions I know how to do. So the blue side is here, and if I bring it back with an R prime, it's now in the 
up front position, which I know how to do. That's an algorithm I know. So the up front algorithm is R U R U R two U prime R prime U R U R prime U prime R U R two U prime R prime U R U R prime U two R prime. So what that did is it placed this piece over here in the right position, and now I can undo that setup move, the R prime, with an R. And now it is in the correct position. Hooray! Okay, let's see what's next. This red and blue piece here, we're looking at the blue piece because that's the front left, it needs to go back here. So now I'm going to bring it over with an R2, and now I see that the algorithm I want is front right. And front right is U prime R, U2, R, U prime, R prime U, R2, U, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, U, R2, U, R prime, U, R prime, U. And now this one's in the correct position. I'm going to bring it back with the R2 to undo the setup move. Okay, and then we keep going. Um, okay, so yellow green needs to go here. We bring that up with an R so that we have it in the front up position, and now we have an algorithm for that, so we do that. Okay. U2, R prime U, R U, R prime U prime, R2, U, R, U prime, R prime, U, R, U, R prime, U prime, R2, U, R, U. Yes, I am me. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's in the right position. Send it back. Here's another one. This one's already fine because we don't need to rotate it, because this will send it right here, which I already know an algorithm for. That's front right. Okay. U prime R, U2, R, U prime, R prime U, R2, U, R prime, U prime, R, U prime, R prime, U, R2, U, R prime, U, R prime, U. Do I really need to say these out loud? I mean, okay, <laughs> whatever. You already know the algorithms anyway. Okay, so you can see it's getting closer to being solved. Um, white red needs to go here, so I can bring that down here, and now it is the front right algorithm. The same one. Okay. Um, I'll just do it. I won't say it because you can look it up. Yeah, there we go. And then I was going to bring it back. Oh, okay, so now the piece in the front left position is actually in the correct spot, but in the wrong orientation. So we can't really like send it anywhere because it's already where it needs to go, just flipped wrong. So in that case, what I would do is I would send it into an unsolved spot, so like I could send it here, and what that's going to do is it's going to bring this unspecial piece, I guess, into here. And while that won't solve anything, it'll allow me to have a better piece in this position that I can actually solve. So I will send it here. It could be up front or front up, it doesn't really matter, so yeah. Okay, so now this piece got sent here, and the piece that was here got sent here. And now that this is a non-special piece, I can actually do an algorithm again, so yellow red yellow red i'll bring that up here and that is the front right algorithm i'll do it i've done it like three times now you kind of all right back down. yellow blue yellow blue needs to go here you are you are Now the piece in the front left position needs to go into the back left position, but we don't have an algorithm for that. And the reason we don't have an algorithm for that is because all of the six algorithms do a three cycle where the piece gets sent off somewhere, and then that piece gets sent to the back left position, and that one gets sent back here. So it's a three cycle already involving this piece here. So I could do an algorithm in reverse because that would send this piece back here, but um, I won't do that because that's more complicated. So I'll just do what I normally do, which is to send the front left piece into an unsolved slot. So I will do up front. So now we've got a solvable piece here, and this piece needs to go from here to here, and that is the front up algorithm. U2, R prime U, R U, R prime U prime, R2, U, R, U prime, R prime U, R U R prime U prime R two U R U. So after solving the nine edges here, 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 and here, there's a half a chance the cube will be solved and you'll be done. 
but there's a half a chance that these two will be flipped. So I haven't found a fast way to do this, but what I usually do is I will solve it as left up, up left, left up. And the reason this works is because if you were to do left up, left up, left up, since it's a three cycle, it would just cycle back into the original position and not do anything. But swapping the middle left up with an up left will flip two edges. So that's left up, and then I'll do up left. And finally, I'll do left up again. And there we go, it's solved. Yes! Okay, now I'm going to get into a few cases you might run into by the end of your solve. So here, there's one flipped edge and one flipped edge here. So what do you do when the front left edge and another edge are flipped? Well, as a general rule of thumb, whenever the piece in the front left position is the front left piece or the back left piece, then you send that piece into an unsolved location. So in this case, I would turn this up here and do any of the algorithms that send this here. So I will do that now. And you can see that it's still not solved, of course. Now that we have the back left piece, which is the orange and blue one, in this front left position, we still have to do that thing where we send that piece into an unsolved location. And then finally, the piece here is not the front left or back left piece, so we can do what we would normally do, which is just to look where this needs to go, which is up front, and then do the algorithm that corresponds with that. Okay, there, and now we get this case, which I already know how to do. And that fixed it. Okay, so what do we do if the front left and back left piece are already solved, but we still have some unsolved edges over here? The same general rule of thumb applies. Since the piece in the front left position is the front left piece, we just send that piece to one of these unsolved locations here. And in this case, I will send it to here. Now we look at the front left position and the piece there is the back left piece, which is still an unsolvable piece, so I follow the same rule of thumb, just send it to an unsolved location. Now I don't want to send this piece here where the front left piece is, because what that will do is it'll send the front left piece back over here and then I'll have to deal with the front left piece going through my cycle again, and I don't really want to do that. So I'll send this piece to here because this is a non-special piece. So yeah, here. Okay, now this is just a normal case. Normal case again. This is the back left piece here, so we just send it to an unsolved location. Normal case again. So we ended up with the same case, where the front left and back left pieces are flipped, but the rest is solved. So again, in that case, we do L U U L L U. That was, well. that was all you, so it is solved again. The cube says goodbye.